Good morning and welcome back to Miniature Monday here on Gaming with ADHD. Where, uh, if you will notice, I'm uh, I'm over here. Well, hello? <laughs> uh, I'm barely fitting on the screen because I've got something a little bit ridiculous today uh, to show you for Miniature Monday. Now, as obviously you can see here on the screen, uh, I'm going to be taking a look at Blood and Plunder. Now, this is the new two-player starter set. They did a Kickstarter a year or two ago. I'll be honest, I did not back the Kickstarter. I actually purchased this relatively recently. Uh, but I wanted to open it up and uh, take a look at the contents uh, because my gaming's been kind of evolving. I'm trying to add in uh, some more, we'll call them uh, less popular uh types of games, uh, namely historical uh, types of games, and uh, I also have a little bit of a history with Firelock games, and uh, and so I just kind of wanted to highlight this because they're a good group of people, they deserve extra support, and let's be honest, they make a fun game too. So, before we get into it, do make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, I try to put out a few different videos each week covering all sorts of tabletop gaming content, whether it's miniatures, board games, card games, or anything in between. And I'd love for you to come along and see what we have to share. So, with that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at this. So, first off, I do want to kind of point out, uh, you'll probably notice on the screen that I'm, you know, off center uh the you know my arm's completely off the screen because like right here this is actually the edge of the box um i have it tucked almost as far back onto the infamously small work table as i can get it and it's still eating up a ton of room um in fact uh let's switch over to the top down camera oh that's actually zoomed in so this is zoomed out as much as I can make it. And normally I can fit uh, a good sized board game on the screen and be able to fit almost all of the box. I I'm barely touching any of it. Um, there's, let's see, there's about two inches above the top of the screen. And let's see. And then about that much on the bottom of the screen. So this thing is absolutely massive. Uh, and in fact, my friend Mike Tunez at uh, at Firelock Games uh, basically called it the most ridiculous thing he's ever been able to pull off. Um, you know, regardless, it is absolutely fun. Uh, I wish I had a tape measure, but I don't. So we're just going to go with it. Basically, your box is about... Um, about, I don't know, about 15, actually, I know a way I could do this. A little weird, but we make do. Haha, -ha. I have another cutting mat. So, uh, this is about 14 inches tall. And then about twenty and a half inches long, and then also about six inches deep. So this box is literally—it's the biggest game box that I've ever purchased. And I realize I'm spending a lot of time on that, but I wanted to emphasize that just because of the amount of stuff that you get in it now blood and plunder is about pirates i mean actually like here we'll you can see my head kind of um it is about pirates and from the little that you can see here you get a uh a sea mat you also get two pirate ships literal pirate ships not giant pirate ships not the biggest ones that they make but still two plastic multi-part kit pirate ships uh you get rule book you get all the stuff that you need out of it um like literally for any version of pirate games that you want to play whether it's raiding a village or you know attacking another ship out on the high seas 
you can do it with Blood and Plunder. Now, this starter set does run uh, on the Firelock Games website for $145 before shipping. Um, you know, there are other places that you can pick it up a little bit cheaper, sometimes with better shipping too. So nothing against the guys at Firelock Games, but you may want to shop around a little bit. Also, talk to your friendly local game store. Maybe they can bring it in. Um, all right, so I'm going to do this a little differently. I've got the box here in my lap, as we can see, uh, because I just don't have enough room. And I'll bring the stuff over and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Uh, so one of the first things, we do get instructions. They have uh, multi-part plastic kits. So we've got all the dis different instructions as far as what pieces are going to go with what models. Not every company does that. You know, those of you who don't, you know who you are. Uh, instructions for the pirate ships. Now, they do not come with sails, okay? There are lots of different techniques, lots of different ways to make sails for your pirate ships. So, Firelock Games has provided templates on their website uh, in order for you to use whatever material you think is best in order to make sails for your pirate ships. So, do keep that in mind. You don't get the sails, you don't get the rigging, but you get all of the other pieces that you need for your pirate ship. Uh, and then last two things that you get is your special characters. One of them is Blackbeard, the other is uh, Lieutenant Maynard, uh, I believe, yes, Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the, Royal, the British Royal Navy. Uh, and basically this starter set kind of focuses on uh, essentially Blackbeard's last stand, okay? So move those over all right what do we got next all right next thing we have it's like i said you do get a map now it is a three foot by three foot map we're dealing with uh, about about 11 inches okay i think it's a little smaller than three by three because these are these are 11 inch squares and it is a tri it's it's folded into three sections so you're gonna get a little bit smaller than a three foot by three foot map it's gonna be fine trust me i know the guys at firelock you can make it do eventually you're gonna want to get something better than a paper mat anyways but i do like that it's double sided it's got some good art so you've got grass so you can do like i said that village invasion that we were talking about and then they also have a sea map uh the colors are very nice the colors are printed up um you know, they don't, uh, yeah, they don't get lost. There's a lot of detail in it. Let's be honest. It's not fancy. It's a paper map. But the box set's already $145. So you're kind of, you know, where do you want them to spend the money? So, all right. We then have the Robert Maynard and Blackbeard sprue. Now this is kind of tucked in on the side of the box. There's a little uh, kind of side compartment. That's where we find these. And let's go ahead and zoom in so we can take a look. And if I can focus the camera. All right, so multi-part kit. These look like they're gonna be pretty easy to assemble. One half is uh, is Blackbeard. Obviously, you've got kind of the grungy little mane going on there. Uh... Oh, that's Robert Maynard's face. Okay, so they're actually a little bit mixed up. So, like, that's the back of um, Blackbeard's head. That's the top of Maynard's head. And there's the bottom of it. Um, but, again... Nice, dynamic posing. Extra, extra pistols, I guess, to glue on their waist. Some in their hands. Cutlass. I mean, regardless. Okay, that's fun. Um, all right. They do also have... Uh, these are actually really nice. So the metal Firelock games uh, would come uh, pre-cast on basically wooden deck planking um and so they recreated that in plastic i actually really really like that um and then on the back side it just says firelock games 
so you can keep that, but I will be honest, I am kind of tempted to go with some clear acrylic um, for these. I don't know. Kind of temp kind of debating. All right, you do also get an extra baggie of bases for all of your others. Kind of interesting that they did that instead of giving you a sprue. All right, we then have two of these black boxes. All right, I'm going to set the box to the side because these are identical. So I'm just going to open one of them. So just keep in mind, you get double all the contents of this box. All right. So we are going to get, well, first off, look at that. Look at that just ridiculousness of plastic. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so you're going to get 20, you get a total of 24 uh, plastic sailors and two plastic sloops. So um, this is going to be 12 sailors and one sloop that you get out of the box. Uh, yeesh. That's how big this is. This is this is how ridiculous it is to try and decide what to show you. All right, so we've got two identical sprues here that uh, are horribly out of focus. So uh, you're gonna get six sailors off of each of these sprues. So we'll zoom in and just keep in mind, you're gonna get four of these. So, um, and it looks like these are duplicated so essentially you have uh three different styles of well no these are not duplicated sorry these kind of threw me off so you actually get yeah you get six different pirates all right i apologize firelock but you get you know you get Muskets, daggers, pistols, spears, pointy finger. Yeah, so you have lots of options on how you're going to build your pirates. So do expect to have a bunch of leftover pieces. Uh, you have, oh my gosh, look at all of the heads. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So about 15 different heads for six different bodies. So that's, that's a lot. This is going to hurt my ADHD. <laughs> I mean, I'll straight up say that right now. Um, just the analysis paralysis is going to hit me hard. I'm going to reach out to Mike. Mike, if you were watching this, I, you and I were going to talk about what I'm supposed to do. With, this is ridiculous. I love it, but it's ridiculous. Well done, sir. All right. <laughs> Sorry for the excessive commentary. All right. Then we've got our... So you get three different sprues for your um, for your sloops. So let's take a look. First off, actually, just look at the detail on this. The wood grain, the wood grain is fantastic. So this is your main deck. I'm guessing this is the poop deck. I just wanted to say poop deck. Uh, this is going to be the back of the ship where you've got the the wheel um, for the rudder. Again, the back just, you know, again, all of this wood grain. Wow. These guys, I don't want to say they outdid themselves. But this is fantastic. And this is this is just the starter set. Alright. We then have... 
Actually, you know what? Let's actually look at this one first. All right, so then we've got the hull. So we looked at the deck first. Now we've got the hull. Um, this sprue is about 11 by 8. So, again, lots of detailing on the wood grain for pretty much every single piece. Got a little bit of prow. I'm, prob I'm probably messing up all of the nautical terms. If I am, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm calling this the prow, even though I know that's not it, because it's more, um, I think, decorative, uh, decorative slash functional for like extending the sail at the front, uh, whatever that's called. I told you, I'm expanding into historical stuff, so. Um, oh, this is even double-sided, except for kind of like the lower hull section. Uh, regardless, just... Now, I had opened this up to kind of peek at it when I got it. I didn't look close enough. This is this is absolutely fantastic. All right, we've got a mermaid masthead. Okay, my only frustration about the mermaid masthead is that you don't have two different ones. Or, like, something else. Obviously, you can paint them differently, but still. Uh, you then have multiple masts. So, yeah, this is... This is all of your mast pieces, anchors, uh, looks like a little door down below decks, um, some scroll work back behind the captain's cabin, I guess. I just so much great detail on this. Jeez. All right. That's awesome. And then we've got a sprue of cannon. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. What's a pirate ship without cannon? So you've got, like, little cannons to kind of go on uh, the, the wall. I'm calling it a wall. I don't know. The, the outside of the boat. Um, but, like... That keeps the sailors from falling over. Um, so you've got some of those. You've got cannon that are going to go into blocks. Um, for your broadsides. Little cannon wheels. And all of the detail is fantastic. It's not quite as beefy as you'd see like from a Games Workshop model. But it's... It's a little more, I would say, durable than you'd find from, like, a regular model kit. So these are... These are great. I, um... Oh, I've got my work cut out for me. Alright, let's take a look at the remainder of the contents. Alright, so... We've got dice. We've got cards. We've got more cards. We've got... Still more cards. We've got a big sheet of tokens and templates. We've got a big sheet of terrain. We've got a book. And, all right. That is all we've got. But look at this. That's how much room it takes up. Oh my gosh. My wife has seen the box. She hasn't seen the box open. I don't think she's going to be very happy once I start putting it all together. I don't know how I'm going to store this. All right, we're going to come back to the book in a minute. That'll be kind of our last thing. We'll do like a page through on that. So let's set that to the side. All right, we've got our terrain. We've got land terrain. And we've got water terrain. Okay, I mean, it's boring just to be out on the open sea. You know, obviously, you know, you've got to maneuver, get in position for a broadside, but better if you got to dodge something. More gamey that way. Anyways, but that's cool. It's just cardboard, nothing fancy. Um, but again, it's a starter set. 
Do you want more boats and pirates? Or do you want more terrain? Okay. That and there's some really good terrain out there anyways. Or make that your next hobby project. All right. We've got lots of tokens. This, I think, was interesting because uh, they've sold dice tokens before. Basically, uh, six-sided dice with all of these symbols on them. Uh, basically, to make them easier to pick up from the deck of a ship when you've got, you know, pirates all over it. Um, so I understand why they went with these, just kind of an interesting choice that they did that instead. Of course, actually, yeah, yeah, no, they didn't do anything different in the dice. All right, you then have, uh, this is your turning gauge for, um, uh, you know, obviously when you want to turn your ship, you've got a ruler, pretty self-explanatory. This is the wind gauge, okay? You need to know which direction the wind is blowing, like this, you know, you put it which direction it's go, or, you know, which direction the wind is going. Um, and then uh, this is going to be uh, like a smoke pot, kind of, or like explosive grenade kind of thingy. So looks like these are all double-sided. A uh, little smoke pot is about, this, this is three inches across. You can see that, see, three lines, it's about the same. There we go, three inches across. As I'm dropping stuff all over the place. Again, folks, this is nothing but professional. All right, we'll look at the cards here in a second. Dice. Okay. Blood and Plunder uses 10-sided dice. These are honestly kind of basic dice. But, I mean, you get a uh, skull and crossbones for your 10. So, that's fine. Um... They're just black. They've got kind of like a, a film on them, probably from the manufacturing process. Um, so I just I wasn't sure if there was like a little coloring or texture, but nope, they're just plain black or very very dark gray. But regardless, you get uh, five, six, seven, twelve. You get twelve dice, six for each player, or just share the dice, whatever you need. All right, we got dice. All right, we then have uh, cards for the different ships. So we've got the Bermuda, Bermuda Sloop and the Balandra. So slightly different ships. Uh, let's, let's zoom in here. All right, so the Bermuda's, Bermuda is going to have a uh, top speed of five inches. Balandra's got a top speed of four. Uh, turning four, draft, six versus five, size two, cannon six or two, swivel four, four. Uh, you then got the traits, so, you know, what kind of, quote, special abilities they're going to have, and then what kind of upgrades you can take on them. So, uh, the Bermuda is going to come in at 14 points, the Belandra is at 10 and you have another side with all of your damage markers. Okay, now I'm going to be really weird, you know, slightly upset if this doesn't work, but I'm going to try it. All right, dry erase marker. Touch that one and all right. Does not come off very clean. Um be careful. Uh I would recommend either laminating or putting into like a sheet protector before you do something like that. Um, I have a laminator. I might laminate these. I don't know. Um, anyways, and then you've got your sail setting. So, hey, anyway, basically, this gives you all of your information for your um, for your pirate ships. So that's awesome. All right, we then have a special character card for each of the special characters. So we've got Blackbeard, weapons, special attributes, and basically a description of all of those special attributes. Okay, I do like that, that instead of just listing it and then you have to look into the book, they just put it all right on the card. That's awesome. All right. We then have card decks. I believe these are just uh, standard playing card decks. Um, 
Like they, it's always been based off of cards. So I think these are just more of the same. Uh, the Jokers are events, so they do come with those cards. And oh, there are five event cards. But yeah, so then you've got two of diamonds, inexperienced, trained veteran. So basically, if you play this card, how many actions the particular unit gets, and you get all of the suits, which they have an interesting way of ordering these. <laughs> so, 1, 11, 13, 12. Okay. That's an interesting layout. I was thinking that they were missing cards, but no. And then you've got a couple extras for events. And these are all backside with uh, a pirate flag. So that's our pirate deck. We then get a British deck. So this is going to be the same thing. Okay. Um, basically, this is what... Uh, basically, this is how you determine initiative, which units get played, things like that. Um... And then you have the Robert Maynard card with his ability and what those abilities do. Um, geez. Holy criminy. This video has been taking a while. All right. We then have our rule book. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right. So it does come wrapped in plastic sometimes is frustrating. But yes, I realize I didn't open up the British pack of cards, but like I said, the only thing that changes... Well, actually, I don't think I said it. The only thing that changes is the backing. So, otherwise, it's the same. All right, so this is the Blood and Plunder rulebook. Now, my understanding is this is the complete rules. They've done extra books which add additional rules, additional scenario types, but mostly they are, uh, they're focusing on adding different timeline. So like, cause the original was, I believe 16th century, maybe 17th century uh, for the original blood and plunder book. Um, and then they've slowly moved it towards like American revolution era. Um, and I think they're going to end somewhere around 18th century, but do, or early 19th century, but do not quote me on that. Uh, I haven't been able to get, or I haven't talked to uh, Mike about it in a while. All right, so we've got original credits, uh, or credits, original design, Mike Tunez, rulebook author, Fred Barnard, producer, writers, uh, Bennerson Little uh, is one of the historical writers and... Uh, consultants, Liam Taylor, Christopher Tunez, Benerson Little, they made a big deal about. Uh, he has written many books about pirates, and, you know, he's basically been on board helping with the game. Um, so this is... They're going for accuracy, even though it's a game. So, all right. Look at that ship. If I can get the glare off. So, I believe that's, that should be one of theirs. And then I know that that's some of their models uh, painted up very well. But then we get <coughs> history of pirates starting at 1655. Six, wow, this is, this is a lot of history. To 1698, then starting in the 1700s with uh, Queen Anne's War, Raise the Black in 1714. Those are some of the expansion books that they've done. And so the timeline stops at 1718. Introduction. Oh my god. Look at that. I 
All right, so you need dice and tests. See, here's the dice markers that I was talking about. I have some somewhere. Um, decks of cards. Miniatures. Unit cards. Um, I didn't see unit cards for the pirates, unless they are in the back here. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyways, so I love the present presentation of the book. Um, you know, it looks like an old weathered book that's got mold spots on it from being around all the moisture out on the ocean. But lots of diagrams, lots of pictures. All the rules. Uh, honestly, a lot of the rules, they're probably organized differently, but it all seems very, very much like the original Blood and Plunder book. I have not played the game in a while. Please forgive me, folks. Um, so... If you already have the book, maybe you don't need this, but I am I am a sucker for starter sets, so... Honestly, the two sloops and the pirates pretty much make it worth it. Um, anyways, then we get into our rules with ships. This is... Alright, okay, look, let's look at this. So we've got the British, got a legendary English commander, Robert Maynard. British units, the Sea Dogs and the Able Seamen. And we've got the Pirates, so Blackbeard. Pirate units, Pirates and Roundsmen. And that's it. Okay, so yeah, so the other ones include like the French, the Spanish... Then they add in, like, the Portuguese and the Dutch. You know, so this does keep it stripped down and focused on the contents of uh, of the, the starter set, which is totally fine. Um, all right, we've got our scenarios. Um, breakthrough... Okay, so they, they give you three different setups. So, breakthrough. You have a land setup. So, if you're just going to play on land. An amphibia setup. So, if you're going to have somebody coming in with a ship. And then having to, like, attack off of the ship on the land. And then, if you're just attacking uh, out on the sea. We've got the raid. Um, again, land, amphibious, and sea. Uh, control the field. Oh, that's... The numbers are what you roll on a dice so that you can randomly pick a scenario. Take and hold and encounter. So, technically five different types of scenarios, but you get three with each. So 15 scenarios out of the book and you have everything that you need to play anyways. We've got historical scenarios, how to create your own scenario, uh, reference section, templates, I like how they do unit cohesion. Uh, I believe this is a 5-inch template. And a uh, 4-inch template uh, if you have 12 or fewer models. 5-inch if you have 13 or more. So you'll never need more than the small one. And then a big fat index. Plus some pages for notes. Uh, basically 8 pages of index. That's... That's going to be good. Okay, that is... That's a lot. What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah, that is Blood and Plunder from Firelock Games. This is the Blackbeard versus Maynard uh, starter set. Like I said, retails for $145, uh, but do check with your friendly local gaming store. Maybe you can get it without having to deal with shipping. 
I don't know, because remember, the box is absolutely massive. But uh, also, um, you know, they are good about going to different shows. I know they uh, try to make it to Adepticon, and sometimes Gen Con depends on the, on the situation. But Adepticon, Gen Con, uh, you know, various other historical-based uh, gaming conventions. So Firelock's pretty easy to find. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, a good presence online. They've got a good... Uh, a good group on Facebook of other players. So there are a lot of really, really good resources if you want to get into this game. As for me, I'm already invested. Trust me. This is I have this is the new plastic. I have, you know, a bunch of the other stuff, but I still that's that's a whole different story. But anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this. I know this went a little bit long than I normally do uh, for these types of videos, but Honestly, I was shocked at how much good stuff that you get out of this box. So if you enjoyed it, please do hit the like button. Don't forget, I will have links down below if you wish to follow us on social media. Just a, uh, uh, a page on Facebook and a, um, uh, a Twitter account, usually where I'll announce what videos that I'm doing. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>